What trap? I demanded. If you know about it, do something. At least let me tell the other gods. Hades smiled. You are spirited. I'll give you credit for that. Have fun in my dungeons. We'll check on you again in, oh, 50 or 60 years. Chapter 8. I take the worst bath ever. My sword reappeared in my pocket. Yeah, great timing. Now I could attack all the walls I wanted. My cell had no bars, no windows, not even a door. The skeletal guard shoved me straight through a wall and it became solid behind me. I wasn't sure if the room was airtight. Probably. Hades' dungeon was meant for dead people and they don't breathe. So forget 50 or 60 years, I'd be dead in 50 or 60 minutes. Meanwhile, if Hades wasn't lying, some big trap was going to be sprung in New York by the end of the day, and there was absolutely nothing I could do about it. I sat on the cold stone floor feeling miserable. I don't remember dozing off. Then again, it must have been about 7 in the morning mortal time, and I'd been through a lot. I dreamed I was on the front porch of Rachel's beach house in St. Thomas. The sun was rising over the Caribbean. Dozens of wooded islands dotted the sea, and white sails cut across the water. The smell of salt air made me wonder if I'd ever see the ocean again. Rachel's parents sat at the patio table while a personal chef fixed them omelets. Mr. Dare was dressed in a white linen suit. He was reading the Wall Street Journal. The lady across the table was probably Miss Dare, though all I could see of her were hot pink fingernails and the cover of Condé Nest Traveler. Why she'd be reading about vacations while she was on vacation, I wasn't sure. Rachel stood at the porch railing and sighed. She wore Bermuda shorts and her Van Gogh t-shirt. Yeah, Rachel was trying to teach me about art, but don't get too impressed. I only remember the dude's name because he cut his ear off. I wondered if she was thinking about me, and how much it sucked that I wasn't with them on vacation. I know that's what I was thinking. Then, the scene changed. I was in St. Louis, standing downtown under the arch. I'd been there before, in fact, I'd almost fallen to my death from there before. Over the city, a thunderstorm boiled, a wall of absolute black with lightning streaking across the sky. A few blocks away, swarms of emergency vehicles gathered with their lights flashing. A column of dust rose from a mound of rubble, which I realized was a collapsed skyscraper. A nearby reporter was yelling into her microphone. Officials are describing this as a structural failure. Dan, though uh, no one seems to know if it's related to the storm conditions. Wind whipped her hair. The temperature was dropping rapidly, like 10 degrees just since I'd been standing there. Thankfully, the building had been abandoned for demolition, she said. But police have evacuated all nearby buildings for fear the collapse might trigger... She faltered as a mighty groan cut through the sky. A blast of lightning hit the center of the darkness. The entire city shook. The air glowed and every hair on my body stood up. The blast was so powerful I knew it could only be one thing. Zeus's master bolt. It should have vaporized its target, but the dark cloud only staggered backwards. A smoky fist appeared out of the clouds. It smashed into the tower and the whole thing collapsed like children's blocks. The reporter screamed. People ran through the streets. Emergency lights flashed. I saw a streak of silver in the sky, a chariot pulled by a reindeer. But it wasn't Santa Claus driving. It was Artemis riding the storm, shooting shafts of moonlight into the darkness. A fiery golden comet crossed her path. Maybe her brother Apollo. One thing was clear. Typhoon had made it to the Mississippi River. He was halfway across the U.S., leaving destruction in, in his wake. And the gods were barely slowing him down. The mountain of darkness loomed above me. A foot the size of Yankee Stadium was about to smash me when a voice hissed, Percy! I lunged out blindly before I was fully awake. I had Nico pinned to the floor of my cell with the edge of my sword at his throat. Want to rescue? He choked. Anger woke me up fast. Oh, yeah, and why should I trust you? No choice, he gagged. I wish he hadn't said something logical like that. I let him go. Nico curled into a ball and made retching sounds while his throat recovered. Finally, he got to his feet, eyeing my sword warily. His own blade was sheathed. I suppose if he'd wanted to kill me, he could have done it while I slept. Still, I didn't trust him. You have to get out of here, he said. Why? I said. Does your dad want to talk to me again? He winced. Percy, I swear on the river sticks. I did not know what he was planning. You know what your dad is like. He tricked me. He promised. Nico held up his hands. Look, right now we need to leave. I put the guards to sleep, but it won't last. I wanted to strangle him again. Unfortunately, he was right. We didn't have time to argue, and I couldn't escape on my own. He pointed to the wall. 
A whole section vanished, revealing a corridor. Come on! Nico led the way.